Microsoft MVP, owner of uh, IT Tech Consulting, and um, thank you for joining us for this uh, tutorial on the if statement, specifically a nested if statement. Okay, let's go ahead and start with the uh, simple if statement, right? So a simple if statement is written like this. Equal if, anytime you write a function in Excel, you always, 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 always start with an equal symbol. So I, in this case, I wrote equal if, and then you're also going to need an open parens, right? And after I write my equal if open parens, the next thing that um, Excel wants is it wants three parameters. Each parameter is separated by a comma, okay? And in this case, I want to, um, first of all, do my condition, okay? And the condition that I'm testing in this case is, is F3 greater than 0.895, right, or 89%. If it is, then I'm certainly going to want to display an A, okay? That's what I want to display. Uh, if it's not, if this condition is false, I'm going to want to display letter B. Okay. Okay, here's our nested if statement, right? So it's very similar to the if condition. So I'm going to type equal if, and there's my equal if, right? And so what would be in here would be a condition, something to test, right? Anytime you see a diamond in flowcharts, it does mean condition or test. Um, so we're going to test something here. And remember, we were testing if, if a value was greater than something. If it's true, we're going to display whatever is true. We're going to display that. If it's not true, right, we had an else condition here, we're going to actually nest another if statement in there, and that's going to look something like this. And if that condition is true, then we're going to obviously display that. But if it's not true, got to do another if statement. There's my other if statement right here. See how those are nested within each other? Condition, true, this would be the false. But in the false, we're putting another if statement. If true, then false. And we're putting another if statement. So in this case, um, in our last condition here, we're testing it. If it's true, then let's display this. If it's not, we're going to display this. That is the basic flowchart for a nested if statement. So once again, let's take a look at the flowchart diagram of the nested if statement. So we're going to test to see if our condition in F3 is greater than an 895%. If it is, then we're going to put a true in that box. If it's not, we're going to do another test, another if statement. And we're going to test to see if it's greater than 795. If it is true, we're going to put a B in there. If it's not true, we're going to test again. And in this case, uh, if it is true, it's a C. If not, we're going to test to see if it's greater than a 595%. And if that condition is true, we're going to put a D. If it's false, we don't really need to we don't really need to test again because it's not an A, it's not a B, it's not a C, it's not a D. It has to be a what? Got to be an F. Okay. So there's our flowchart for the nested if program, our nested if function. Okay, let's put this uh, if statement into practice now. We're looking at a very simple Excel spreadsheet, and you can see that I've got some column headings, name, test score, possible percent, and letter grade, and then, of course, some student names. Letter grade is where we're going to be putting our if statement and eventually our nested if statement. We want to test the value in cell E3 for this example to see if it's greater than a certain percentage, and if it is, we're going to give the student an A. If it's not, we're going to give the student a B. OK, uh, and also we're going to see why a nested if statement is important here, because we really only have two options, A and a B. And as you look at the student's percentage, you're pretty sure that we need to add the C, the D, the E, the F, uh, all those different conditions. And we can't do that with a simple if statement. But let's start with the simple if statement. OK, remember that anytime you start a function in Excel, you're going to use the equal symbol. And in this case, I'm going to use equal if and followed by an open parens. And now these tooltips are really, really helpful. Notice that I've got 
uh, the logical test is what's bold and highlighted. What that's saying is, hey, you know what? I see that you typed in an equal if statement and you want to make an if function here. The next thing that you need to type in is our logical test. Well, I can simply click on this cell or I can type the cell. I'm going to go ahead and type the cell. E3 is greater than, and I'm going to say 0.895. And I'm going to separate that with a comma. What happens the minute I hit the comma? Look at my tooltip down here. It, the logical test stopped being bold, and the next condition, or the condition if true, is bold. So it wants the condition if true, and I'm going to give it that. Uh, and So I wanted to put an A in there. I'm going to put a comma. And now, the minute I put the comma to separate the parameters, the tooltip tells me, okay, you need to type in the what do you want if the value is false. And in this case, I'm going to say a B. And I'm going to close my function with a close parens. I'm going to hit enter. And there's the letter grade B. I'm going to go ahead and center everything in this uh, cell. I just simply select the column and select the center button here. So you can see we've got a B. Is that really what we wanted? Well, our right up here you can see our if function. Our if function is working just like we wanted it to, right? Uh, it tested this condition. It's not greater than 0.895, so it wouldn't print the value of true, but it did print the value of false. But really, that function is not going to take care of what I need in some of these other cells where I want to display C's, D's, E's, and F's. Okay, so how are we going to resolve that? Well, we're going to resolve that by a simple nested if statement. So let's come back up into my um, cell F3, and I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, delete well I'm not going to delete it I'm going to come up here and I'm going to change uh, my value of false because this is where the nesting comes in so here we've got if e3 is greater than 895 percent then give me an a what do I do if the value is false remember the tooltip is asking me now to put the value of false well we're going to test again if another open parens and now I'm going to and look at my tooltip Give me a logical test, right? Well, let's the same cell E3, right? Excuse me, E3. Except this time I want to test to see if it's greater than a 0.795 percent. Greater than 0.795 percent. That would give the person a B. Well, in this case, it's not true again, so I'm going to separate that by a comma. If it is true, I want them to be to get a B. Uh, they deserve it. Uh, if it's not true, I have to test again. So I'm going to put a comma. Notice my tooltip immediately went to value of false. We're going to nest another if statement inside here. If, open parens, and um, this time I'm going to check E3 to see if it's greater than 0.695%. Or excuse me, 0.695, not percent, greater than a 69.5 percent. Um, if that's true, I want to go ahead and display a what? I want to display a B, I mean, excuse me, a C. Correct? Now let's put a comma there. I have to test again, right? And so to test again, I have to type if, open parens. Now I'm going to type um, uh, another condition. E3, again, is greater than 0.595%. So that will be a D, right? So if it's greater than 0.59%, I want to put a D in there. Now, do I need to keep testing? Notice we got 1, 2, 3, 4. Well, if it's not an A, and it's not a B, and it's not a C, and it's not a D, we can simply assume that it's an F. So I'm just simply typing uh, the F in there in the value of false because I've already tested for all my other conditions. Now here's something that's very interesting that I want you to see. This function will not work right now. Uh, ask yourself if you can figure out why. Uh, if you can, you're really good at math. Okay, And it has to do with what? My open and close parens. Notice that this parens, op close parens is green. Notice that the open parens here is green, but I also have two, one, two, three, 
three more open parens. So what I need to do is I need to add the three other closed parens. Okay, now doing that, now my formula is going to work. And notice that my formula has returned the letter C. It tested to see if it was greater than 8. No, it wasn't. So I had went to the value of false. Tested to see if it was greater than 795. No, it wasn't. So it, it went to the next condition, false. Tested to see if it was greater than 695. It was greater than 695. So it inserted a C. No reason to go any further. Once it found the value to be true, it inserted the C. So that's it for a nested if statement. It's very, very simple, very, very powerful tool. It can be used many times in Excel. What you're going to want to do now is we're going to want to add this function to the rest of these cells. And the simple way to do that is your fill button, which is this little square in the lower right hand corner of the selected cell. And as I hover my mouse over it, you see the thick plus sign turns into a crosshair, we call it. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that and I'm going to drag it straight down to the last cell and those formulas get uh, put into each cell. Let's see if they're right. 81% is a B. Yep. 87% is a B. 51% is a fail. 43% is a fail. 81 is a B. 92 gets the A. 62 gets the D. And 75 gets the C. So our nested if statement worked as expected. Thank you for watching our tutorials. Please subscribe to our channel and look for some more um, really useful Excel tutorials. Thank you.